Hello and welcome to SPC Online. It is the 17th of January 2021. It is. Whew. I know. My name's Mark. I'm the vicar here at Stockton Parish Church. My name's Carl. I am an intern here at Stockton Parish Church. We meet every Sunday morning for a service of worship on YouTube where we worship God, grow closer to him and get prepared to change the world because we can't meet in the building right now, even more so in lockdown three because of COVID. That's why we're outside. It's a bit safer, lots of ventilation. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you're not going to breathe in any of the particles I exhale. I it's gone that way. Uh, so it's, it should it's all be safe here. Um, if you're watching live on Sunday morning uh, on YouTube, do head over to the chat and say hello. Uh, I'm usually there. Carl, are you going to be there? I will be there. Yeah. Say hello to us. What else can they do yeah. on social media? Give us a like on Facebook and go follow us on Instagram. And you know what? If you want, you could share this link uh, to this service with your friends and family so that they can get to know Jesus. Absolutely. We would love that. Carl, how's your week gone? My week's gone all right, actually. I had a nice meeting with uh, the bishop. Oh. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Yeah, She. I think she likes me. She does. Yeah. Who wouldn't like you, Carl? Exactly, yeah. I wonder how your week's gone. My week's, I have to be honest, my week's been a bit up and down. It's generally been good, but some days have been harder than others. I was hearing uh, Pastor Rick Warren is in America, leads a massive big church in America. And there, you often hear this phrase, well, we're all in the same boat. You know, we're all in lockdown. But actually, it isn't quite like that. Uh, some of us maybe feel like we're in a boat gently rocking on the waves. Some of us feel like things are going bad. We're in a lifeboat. It's a little bit more uh, frightening. Some of us might feel we haven't, you know, we're in a life raft. We're holding onto a branch in the sea. And some of us may be clambering after something because life is just really hard. And no matter which one of those you feel, I want you to know that you're welcome here this morning. And we're going to worship Jesus because he is the rock. He is the one on whom we build everything. He keeps us secure. He is our guide. He's the one who calms the storm. Mm. Yeah. Let me pray as we uh, enter into a time of sung worship. Father God, would our boats that we're in, would they be directed towards you today? Would you be our destination? And would we fix our eyes on you this morning? Father, whether we're in a life draft or in a big frigate, Lord, would uh, our final destination be you and would we be facing you today? Father, we pray that you would be with us this morning in our worship. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm He is Lord Lord of all When darkness seems to hide His face Rest in his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale. My anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Oh, Christ alone.
great God, we praise your name. We lift up our praises to you. We thank you for you. Lord, we thank you that you are an all-seeing, all-knowing, all-doing God. Lord, we thank you that you care for us. That although you know everything, before it even happens, Lord, you still have so much compassion towards every single cry that goes up to you. So Lord, we take this moment to lift our cries up to you. All of the things that we see that are unjust and painful, Lord, we lift up our broken hearts to you. And we pray that you would, in your mercy, heal them. God, would you bind them up? Would you envelop them in your love? That we may see what you see in people. That we may not be caused to despair, but Lord, instead rejoice. In knowing that you will make all things right. That you know what you're doing. That you are not just leaving us here to be walking around willy-nilly in COVID city. God, you know exactly what you're doing. Lord, would you give us the faith to trust in you and to walk in the way that you call us to. Father, we pray that this world would come to know you. Father, we pray that salvation would fall down like the rain falls in this little island. Father, we pray that salvation would overtake all of the hurt and all of the pain. Father, we pray that this world would turn and see its maker and stop worshiping the created things but turn to its creator. Father, we praise you for the fact that you know exactly what you're doing, that you are trustworthy, that you have never failed and that you are not failing now. Lord, we dare to entrust such a huge thing to you. We entrust the entire world to you and yet it is a light thing for you and it is easy for you. So God, we glorify you and we praise you for your mighty hand that holds every single one of us. Mighty and compassionate God, would you hear our cry? Amen. Let's say in this attitude of worship, I was talking about giving. You know, we don't give because Mark tells us to. We don't give because it's just what is done and we have to do it. We give because we're partnering with God to see his kingdom come in Stockton on Tees. So if you're part of this church and you give regularly, thank you so much for that. But if you want to give today, why don't you go to spcgive.org.uk and would love for you to partner with God for his kingdom to come in Stockton. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for all the money in our bank account that allows us to partner with you to see your kingdom come in Stockton. to see the kingdom of love and grace and mercy fall on this town forever. What privilege it is to partner with you. So Father, would you bless everything that's gone into our accounts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, OSG means friendship. OSG means fellowship. OSG means encouragement. This online small group is our church. OSG means fun and laughter. OSG is a family to me. They are very supportive. OSG is a lifeline. One of the best things about 2020 were the relationships that were built through my online small group. Relationships that I'll never forget. It's not too late for you to join an OSG, whether you've been part of our community 
for many, many years, or whether you're just beginning to connect with us through the Sunday videos, just click the link below or visit our website and register your interest for OSGs and we will have a chat with you to get you into the best group for you. This term we're exploring calling, that God has a purpose for each one of us, a role for all of us. Let me ask you, do you think you are where God wants you to be? Or do you think maybe he's calling you to somewhere or something else? When we think of calling, it's really easy to assume that we're just talking about sort of Christian ministry jobs, those obviously church-based ministry roles. For example, I am called to lead this church. But most of us are called to lead in the places where God has already put us, in our homes, in our workplaces, our schools, our colleges, our communities. That's the place where we can be beacons for God's kingdom and see his kingdom come. Now we're going to look at each of these places a little more as we move through the term. But this morning I want to look at the reason why some of us are called to serve in God's church. And I want to introduce you to someone with a really exciting calling. I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 4. Paul wrote this church, uh, the church in Ephesus, and we call it Ephesians. He says this, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith, and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. God calls some of us into specific roles in his church. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. This passage explains why. It is not so that the church can be built up and be big. That would be empire building. It's so that everyone, everyone can be equipped for works of service. Earlier on in chapter 2, Paul says that Jesus has picked these works of service out for each of us. We are all called into specific roles. Those of us with a particular call to serve in the church, it's our role to equip everybody for works of service. And it's very much our mission here at SPC. We want to be beacons for God's kingdom, wherever we are placed. We want to see the world changed in Jesus' name. Many of you will know, I came here to SPC in 2012 as the curate. Now, curate is like an apprentice. I had been to university for the first part of my training, and then I came here to be trained by Alan to lead a church. And then very unusually, it's not normal at all, I stayed here to become the vicar as Alan retired. Then I was asked to train Emily. She came here to be trained by me and all of us to lead a church, and she has now gone off to lead another church, with, or plant a church, with her husband, Mark. I am delighted to tell you today that we've been asked to train another curate. Her name is Julia, and she'll be joining us this summer. And I want to introduce her to you with this interview that we filmed. Julia, it's really, really good to be chatting to you this morning. Um, so. I suppose what everyone really wants to know is, who is this person? You're gonna come and gonna be our new curate at SPC. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name's Julia Bell. I'm British, but I'm living in the Netherlands. So hence Tulips is a good place to start. Very good, I see. Um, married to a Dutchman, so he'll be coming with me. Uh, two children who are 20 and 18, so I'm going to be leaving them behind, so no doubt there'll be discussions about what I'm looking forward to, but that's the one thing that's going to be the hardest, is leaving children behind as they go into studies. And um, I studied engineering, uh, worked, uh, left university, started work in that engineering field, and now I know you'll ask me what I do now, but what I do now is uh, working actually with 
development of people. So there's a lot of cross uh, learning that I do there with also my ministry. And we work and develop, I work for a utility company where I work on training and helping leaders develop how they lead in an authentic way. So that's what I'm doing right now. You've just used some buzzwords, which we love in SPC. You talked about leadership because leadership's a big, a big issue for us in, in that we are all leaders and we lead ourselves as well as we lead other people. And you use that word authentic. We, it's one of our core values is authenticity. And, and we try and be who who we are and try and pretend to be something that we're not. So that's really good to hear. So just tell us a little bit about uh, what you live in the Netherlands, but you're British. Uh, how did that come about? Yes, yeah, straight after university, I took the plunge to accept a job working in the Netherlands. I'd never been on a plane. I had, uh, it was scary. And that's why I basically said, yes, this is a job that I want to try out. So I got on my first plane and came to my first proper job. Uh, and uh, so that was quite a long time ago. Uh, and when I was here, I met Mike. So that's my husband, as I said, that I will be bringing with me. Um, and I was here for five years uh, and then left and we left for 14 years. And then 12 years ago, I got a phone call from someone going, oh, I've got this great job, do you want to move back? And because my children were bilingual, I could do that more easily. So that's how I ended back here. But the original Dutch connection goes way back from basically when I finished studies. Okay. And so tell us a little bit about, so we're obviously Scottish Parish Church is a Church of England church. Uh, you're not even in England, let alone the UK, uh, but you're going to be a curate in the Church of England. So tell us about your church right now. How have you come to, you know, why are you coming to SPC? Tell us about your church. Yeah. Um, well, some people will know this, but a lot won't. So even though we're not in England, we are actually part of the Church of England. So there's this diocese, so uh, uh, bishops uh, who are called the diocese in Europe. Uh, and there are therefore various Church of England churches scattered around Europe. And it goes all the way from the north, right at the top of Norway, down to, I think we have one in Morocco or something, which is even Europe, of course. And it goes a long way out to the east as well. So I'm actually a member of a Church of England church in Amsterdam. And it was one of the first things that we organized when we came over. So we'd been living in London and moved to the Netherlands this time round. And one of my friends said to me at that time, the hardest things to find when you move is a hairdresser and a church. So I did this long list, sorry, Mark, but I did this long list of churches I was going to go out and try. And the very first one I walked into, it felt like I was coming home. It was like a warm bath. I got that welcome. And I never went through the list, to be honest. I just tried out one. So it's a Church of England church called Christ Church Amsterdam. So, uh, and we've been worshipping there, therefore, for 12 years. Okay. And uh, so Anglican Church, Church of England, uh, I suppose, is where I've grown up and always been. Oh, I was just going to go on. You asked me about training. How how yeah, come I'm going to so, end up? So for, I'm I'm trying to think. For most people that that are in SPC, we're probably more familiar with somebody who's gone away to university to train to be a curate full time. Um, although we do have a, a we do have somebody in our church who's training in a different way, a, a similar way to you. So tell us a little bit about your training route. Yeah. So. Uh... Basically, in order to be able to train while still living somewhere else, um, I'm working full time and training part time. So it keeps me busy. And what that means is we do uh, training online. Of course, everyone's training online, but mine's always been training online once a week, basically getting lessons and then lots and lots of reading in between. And then when we can meet up, we meet up six weekends a year plus a longer week in the summer so we really build up that sense of community work together do projects together and so forth so it's a mixture of a lot of working online and also doing 
uh, weekends together where we can also have those very deep discussions in the bar, for example, whatever it might be. Try and put the Church of England to rights. And indeed, so all indeed. Of the in the Church of England, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm familiar with those kind of conversations. You're coming from Amsterdam to Stockton. Where are you from in the UK originally? Where would, where would you call kind of, I don't know if you would use the word home, but where are you from? Yeah, born and brought up in London. So uh, London girl, I met someone recently who I managed to pinpoint which bit of London I came from. So he was a bit, bit like that weird person in My Fair Lady. I wouldn't worry about that. To be honest, if it's south of York, it's London. It's so, southern, uh, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But you're coming to Stockton. Now, this was really exciting. You have a connection with Stockton, what, which is... Yeah, when I was... So I say, I mentioned my first job, which was in the Netherlands. But before that, when I was at university, I was actually sponsored through university by ICI. So I spent time working at Billingham uh, when that was there. And... Uh, I spent a year off and I worked uh, in Billingham in the fertilizer plant. I can still smell it up my nose. Uh, it used to get everywhere. Uh, it's a particular smell that takes me right back. Uh, and I spent a year and I lived in Norton for that time and uh, visited many pubs, I think. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm coming back with, uh, with some good, really good memories of uh, time there. So very, very happy to be returning after. A long time away. I won't ask you how long that was, but that's 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 really good. Normally, uh, you would have been able to visit SPC. You'd have met some of the people at SPC. You'd certainly have been to some of our services. Uh, we haven't been able to do any of that, have we? You've been engaging entirely online. We've only ever met through Zoom. But we, you and I had to spend some time discerning if this was God's will, if God was calling you to SPC. And we both really feel strongly about that, that this is the right thing. What are you looking forward to about joining us at SPC? That's a very, it's actually a very long list. I'm really, I have been following a lot of the services so far. It's all been incognito, so I haven't put any comments. Um, but I have watched a lot of the YouTube services. It, I'm really excited about the whole ethos. I can really feel a team. One of the things I really wanted to join was a team. Um, so that's really exciting. I love the joy of the gospel that comes out every time. Um, we always joke in theological college that people only have one sermon well my sermon is pretty much we've talked about this mark but my sermon is Jesus is fun and I can really feel that coming out uh, also at Stockton which is is great I think that's going to feel very comfortable uh, and so just really looking to get stuck in starting things bringing ideas but also learning a lot from everyone that's there and I've been really enjoyed following all of those services and feeling for me, I feel a part of it. I feel like I've met a lot of people already. So that's a, that's a great help, actually, being able to do all of that online. Yeah, it, it has, it, there's nothing beats being physically present, but because we're online, you can see actually a lot more of us, uh, which has been great. Uh, so when are you coming? Well, is it next week or is it the week after? <laughs> when are you coming? Yeah, uh, well, first of all, I have to finish my training. Uh, and I've been on a three-year course, so that finishes in June, the end of June, and the bishops will ordain me on the 4th of July. It's a really easy date to remember, so uh, uh, American Independence Day, 4th of July in Cathedral in Durham. Uh, as I've said, I'm leaving my children behind here, so normally uh, Mark would be saying, come and start on the 5th of July, um, but I've negotiated to come a little bit later so that I can get my daughter sorted out for school or university. So I'll be arriving in September, but uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So, yeah. And obviously we don't quite know what July will look like, but um, normally, and, and I certainly hope that a whole bunch of us will come up to the cathedral to be present whilst you're being ordained, along with all the other Durham uh, ordinands or curates as you'll then be, and you'll be ordained a deacon. And then, although there's a few details to work out, effectively you'll start work with us in September once, um, once all the kind of stuff is sorted out with school and university. Um, 
yeah yeah julia how can we as a church be praying for you yeah i've realized as we come into 2021 that it's really exciting but there's a lot to organize so that will be uh, just the prayers of working out what to do, how to hand over my current job in a good way, because I want to make sure that uh, that works properly, that my daughter passes her exams, because otherwise we have different conversations, um, uh, although she's doing fine at the moment, so that's good. Um, and ever since we've been in conversation, I felt very calm, comfortable, reassured that this is what God wants me to do. That's been there the whole time. It's been absolutely a real gift from God for that. Um, so I think just that ongoing peace and, you know, help with the practical stuff, but, you know, that I just feel God's presence with me through this final bit of training and organisation. Yeah. Julia, it has been wonderful to get to know you a little bit over the last few months uh, it's been great to speak to you this morning we are so excited about you joining SPC uh, I'm really sorry folks I've not been able to share this with you until now but now as a church we can get excited we can build and we can be praying for Julia and Mike and Twan and Pip as they plan this big it's a big old move that we're asking them to make to come and join us here in Stockton so Julia, please be reassured we're going to be praying for you and we can't wait for you to join us. Yeah, it's mutual. I'm really looking forward to it. Bless you. If you're watching on Sunday morning, Julia is in the chat. The truth is she's been watching for weeks, but hasn't wanted to say anything until she's been introduced to you all. So she's in the YouTube chat right now. Please stop what you're doing. Just pop onto the YouTube chat and say hello and welcome to Julia. Julia, we are so excited mm -hmm. that you're coming to join us here to become part of the team and to work with us as a beacon for God's kingdom here in this town and to see God's kingdom come. Uh, we're going to pray for Julia and Mike and Twan and Pip, her family, in a moment. Carl, what about your call? Mm. How did you sense your call? Yeah, so I, I guess I sense my call through a lot of prayer and through other people as well, through observing people like you, people like, uh, like Emily and some of the other vicars that I've uh, been around for a while yeah. uh, so I feel called to ordained ministry yeah. and yeah it through observing people is one of the ways that I think God shows us our calling yeah and so one of the things we really want to do is is show you other people and their calling right? there isn't a case of higher you know my, my call is, is isn't sort of the greatest call uh, most people it's where you are that God has already called you. Now, some will be called into something new, and that's great. We'd love to encourage and work with you and bless you and support you in that. But we would really want to equip you for where God has placed you. So let me ask you, what has God called you to? Where has he placed you right now? And do you need to do something to recognize that call? Why don't we pray, and then we're going to worship again. Father, thank you for the call on each of our lives. Thank you that every one of us, every single one of us, has been called into your kingdom and to serve you in your kingdom. Father, thank you for the call on Julia's life. Thank you for her obedience to that call that she and her husband Mike and her children Twan and Pip are willing to make the journey across a country from the Netherlands here to Stockton on Tees. And we pray with excited anticipation for all you are going to do in them and through them as they are part of SPC in this town. God, in your kindness and in your graciousness, would you remind each of us of our call? and our purpose and our role. Come Holy Spirit, speak to us today for your servants are listening.
You know, we don't just watch a video on a Sunday and do nothing about it. We, we're constantly asking God, what are you saying to us? And what should we do about it? And so, whether that's to do with your calling, whether that's to do with uh, any aspect of your life, why don't you ask God, what are you saying to me? And then you then take the steps to do something about it. It might be God is inviting you to establish a new call. It might be God is prompting you to come and join an online small group. Mm. They are so important. We really want to encourage you. If you're not part of an online small group, please get connected with us. Don't be scared. And you can always say no after the first session if you decide you don't like it. But it is time for our service to finish. Uh, a little bit better than last week, Carl, yeah. when it was raining sideways, yeah. although it is slightly cold. My eyes are still watering. Yeah, okay. From last week, the whole yeah. time. You've just been All crying week. for a whole week. The whole week. Okay, <laughs> why don't you pray as we finish, Carl? Father, help me to live this week to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself away to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being with us this morning. We will see you next week. And until then, have, have a, a blessed, blessed week. week.